Hi Stampers, Rachel here from reachthestamper.wordpress.com and today I'm going to show you how to make this little cute sack that you could put some treats in for Halloween. You could definitely slip like a gift card in here um, just to give you an idea. It's definitely big enough to fit a pack of dimensionals in. So you could fit like some M&M's, um, snack packs, Skittles, any kind of, even really a Hershey bar if you want it sticking at the top or some fun size snack bars in there as well. Um, this one is a little bit smaller. This measures um, kind of four inches square almost. So we're going to make one that's a little bit taller and um, just a smidge wider. And this one I used from the Jar of Haunts. This is the little mummy. And then I punched a circle out of the two inch circle punch with the pumpkin pie glimmer paper to kind of make like almost like a little moon. And then I just tied a little bit of the Halloween night designer uh, or Halloween night Baker's twine, sorry, and then I did the classic label punch with the trick-or-treat and then a little glimmer paper just to give it a little bit more fun. So this one I actually did on the Halloween Night Designer Series paper. This is the Specialty Designer Series paper, and as you can see, it folds over and folds up in the back like a little, kind of like a paper shopping bag, like an old-fashioned shopping bag, kind of the kind they put cards in when you get cards from that card store that we don't buy stuff from because we make our own cards yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is um, I actually got instead a piece of, uh, this is just a 12 by 12 cardstock. This is Garden Green. And what I thought we would do instead, instead of using the Designer Series paper, is we would cut out a piece of Designer Series paper and we would frame it. So this one is dual sides, so you could either use the dots or you could use, um, it's kind of like a fishtail chevron-ish kind of a pattern. Or you certainly can do it with designer series paper. So again, this one is going to measure six and a half by 12 and we're going to make this just a little bit larger. So we're going to go ahead and do a little bit of scoring. This is the Simply Scored Scoring Tool. You can get all these supplies and more in my online store, reachthestamper.stampinup.net. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to score this at three on the long side and at eight. Okay, and then we're going to turn it sideways and we're going to score just to give it a little bit more, we're going to score it at about a uh, half of an inch, half an inch. So half inch down the long side. Okay. So again, so you have three, eight, and then a half inch at the bottom. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get this out of the way. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fold this with our bone folder just to reinforce the edges. And we're going to do a little bit of trimming. So this is going to overlap and that's going to close our little bag. Okay, what I am going to do, so what I, I did the first time, and you can do this completely up to you. I did a little bit of a trim here just to kind of give it a little wedge so it would close a little better. So you're going to just trim at that tiny score line down there. But I trimmed mine just a tiny bit over. And then, again, this is up to you. So you can cut these two little doodads off here if you'd like. But what I did is I folded them up. And then we're going to kind of interlace them. That way it gives us a little bit more. And we're going to fold this over so it gives us a little bit more strength. The only thing is when you do this, it's going to give you this tiny little edge up here on your card because one's pushing the other one up. So we're going to go ahead and just give this just a tiny little trim off the top. Now you can certainly wait until you do this after the fact if you like. But I'm going to just do it now get it out of the way. And then another thing that I did... And this is, again, completely up to you. But on this one, just to let the other Designer Series paper peek through, when it was open, I just did a little trim. So if you want to do that, what you would do is you'd get your Stampin' Trimmer, and you would slide this in. And what you're going to do is you're going to just cut in between these two, maybe about a quarter of an inch. So you would just put your... Um, your little cutting blade here. So this is going to be at nine and four, just because that's where it lines up in the middle and you would just slide it across. Now, since mine is just green on green, we don't really necessarily have to do that, but I'm going to show you what it looks like just for the sake of doing it. So that's a little farther than I wanted. Let me go back just a hair and you don't have to do this again. This is completely optional. Okay. So if you do that, you're going to have this little slit. And then what you're going to do is just take your little snips and kind of just snip the edge. I kind of give it a little bit of a, a corner cut here 
just so it would have a little bit more of a, I want to trim this off just a smidge, a little bit of an edge to it so you could tell the difference in the two. You definitely will notice it more. There you go. You'll notice it more when you do your, um, your designer series paper, if that's what you're going to do, but up to you. And again, my lines are just a slight bit off. So we'll trim this off when we glue it all together. So once again, up to you, you can use your favorite adhesive. You could use snail. I use that on this one. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, fast fuse on the bottom here, and then I'm going to use a snail on the other part. So we're just going to run the fast fuse on the inside here. Oops, missed that little spot. And then the other thing is you kind of have to figure out which part do you want to overlap. Do you want the thin over the back, or do you want the fat part over? So I think we're going to do thin because that's kind of traditionally looks a little bit better. So we're going to put a little strip of fast fuse right here on the edge. Come on, fast fuse. Work with me. And it doesn't have to be all the way up. That's up to you. Get that little goop off. Okay, and then I'm going to put just a tiny, tiny bit of snail on this here. And these will just hold these two together a little bit. So just really on the edges. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to fold these two kind of up. And then you're going to overlap thread them. So since you want this one to be the bigger part, you're going to kind of stick them together as you slide and don't really press down until you get it, get it to the width that you want it. You'll understand when this, when you put yours together. Okay. So there's your seal. And again, you can go over this with your bone folder a little bit, but what I really do is when you fold your flap up, just go over it with your bone folder just so it really adheres that uh, fast fuse and then you get a really tight seal. So there you go. Okay, so there's a little box. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just look. You really can't tell so much with this, but I'm going to give it just a tiny, tiny trim just to even it up a slight bit. Since I was a little generous with my, there you go. So now you have one nice line. Generous with my uh, snipping earlier. And you can also, you could do this you know, way farther down if you wanted to, but I definitely think it makes a nicer impact when you have the different sides of the designer series paper more so than just green on green. Other thing, if you decided that you didn't want to decorate the front of this, you could certainly stick this. Now you wouldn't want to use a whole piece. You could put it on the inside that we have a little bit different of a flare if you don't have any designer series paper, but we're going to put ours onto the front and I'm going to trim this up just a hair more. So this, I believe, ended up measuring five and three quarters yeah, five and three quarters by four and three quarters. So I'm going to bring this up a little bit too. Eh, a little closer to five and a half. I think that should be perfect. Okay, that's very nice. That's going to fit perfectly. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put some snail on this just to adhere it down to our bag. Okay, and then I did a couple different things. So I kind of gave you guys some choices on what we're going to do. I used the cool Happy Halloween Trick or Treat. That is a single stamp. It's called Halloween Treat. It's wood mount. It's in the uh, holiday catalog. Or I also did a few of my little friends from the cookie cutter Halloween. I did a cute little scarecrow if you're not really Halloween and maybe you're more fall. And I did a mummy. And you can put both of these guys, actually. That would be really cute. And then I also cut out one of the bats, so we'll pop him up there as well. But there's tons of stamp sets that you can use right now that are uh, Halloween-themed or fall-themed in the holiday catalog. There's also the Ghoulish Grunge. If you didn't have any designer series paper, you could always stamp on this. You could stamp Garden Green onto Garden Green, and it'll give you that tone-one-tone -tone effect. That would be really cool. You could just do the brick wall if you wanted to do that as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a little bow for our happy Halloween and then we're going to hook our little friends on there. Okay, so let me bring this over so you can see the difference between the two while I'm working. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the orange baker's twine just since we have green and black here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make, I think I'm going to make a double bow. So I'm going to cut myself, um, I wouldn't say a terrifically long piece, but a moderately long piece and I'm going to just fold it in half on itself and I'm going to do my very best 
to tie a double bow. Sometimes I do better than others. Let's see. Okay, I think I didn't do so bad. Let me just neaten this up a little bit. Give it a nice tug to make it tight. Okay, and then I know this one has a double loop, so get rid of that first. You could keep it long if you wanted to, but I'm gonna trim it down just a tiny bit. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a glue dot and I'm gonna just stick that on the back of my bow. And I'm gonna put this right here. And I'm gonna pop this dude up on some dimensionals. Um, as you see, I do use my dimensionals all the way to the edge. A lot of times, if you're using these little tiny pieces, you can use them for things. If you have really crazy shapes, you could use the thin pieces instead of using the um, foam window sheets if you don't have those handy. So we're gonna pop this guy kind of up here at the top, eh, like mid to top. And we'll put this little dude, I don't think I have a thin enough piece. So these little guys here are great for little tiny pieces. So we'll put our little bat up on one as well. Let me flip this around. Sometimes you will find that there's definitely a better way to put this on here. Okay, and then we have our little two little Halloween guys here. So we're going to put them up on dimensionals as well. Why not give this a little bit more fun? And now all we would have to do is fill this with a cool little treat and give this to a friend. Again, these are two totally different uh, dimensions. So if you do need one that's a little smaller, you could use the 4x4. Four four, and you could absolutely change it to any size that you want, bigger, smaller, or anywhere in between, really. So this one kind of takes a little bit of the boo out of it, but there you go. So this would definitely, you could even fit a card in there if you wanted to give somebody a card, full-size candy bar, whatever you like. So I hope you guys enjoyed this craft. It's a little cute thing that you can give to your friends on Halloween. Again, you can get all these supplies and more in my online store, reach the stamper.stampinup.net. And you can visit all um, my blog for all of the measurements on these, both of these two little treat holders, just to give you a little bit of ideas. And again, you can modify all the sizes to fit anything that you would want to give someone. Thanks for taking time to watch. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe to me on YouTube. You can follow me at reach the stamper. Thanks for taking time to watch guys. Hope you have a great night.